what's going on internet josh noel from sunduck film and we got a great tutorial today because we're going to create a boring 2d scene but make it come to life very quickly with a free volumetric light pack from rocketstock.com so head over to rocketstock.com and download this free 4k pack that comes with 16 uh, free elements, 14 of them are volumetric lights, and the other two are dust elements, which you can overlay into your motion graphic scenes. So go ahead and download this from rocketstock.com. I'll provide a link in the description of the video. But let's go ahead and create a beautiful scene and let's get started. And we can scrub through this and see all the beautiful volumetric light elements that we can incorporate within our footage. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a scene with this volumetric light. So it should be good to go. So let's go over to our new composition. I already have some text in here. You can put a logo, you can do whatever you guys want. Uh, but when you have something in here, what I suggest doing is just pre-compose this layer and call it placeholder so you can easily swap it out later and just click OK. And we'll go ahead and maybe drop in a element right now. So maybe we'll go with I don't know, let's go with like maybe the big dust beam, put this on top of our placeholder layer, and we'll have to hit S on keyboard for scale, and we'll bring this layer down. And obviously we can't see through it because it's not a transparent layer, but this gives us a lot of control of how we want to blend this. So we'll toggle switch to the modes, and we'll go to the blending mode, and we'll set this beam layer to hard light. And now we're gonna be able to have a lot of contrast, and there's gonna be a lot of animation with it, and it's gonna look absolutely beautiful. And of course you can, experiment with the blending modes so you can always play with screen add or lighten also you can use soft light uh, but I think hard light is my favorite and you know because it'll actually blend what's whatever's underneath it uh, perfectly you know with contrast it looks beautiful so let's go ahead and see how we can quickly take this scene and you know make it come to life a little bit more so what we can do is placeholder layer what I like to do is go up to layer layer styles and drop in a inner shadow and we'll go into inner shadow and you can actually see right here, I mean, this is looking pretty good. Like there's almost like an indent on this wall, if you will. Um, and you can always play these settings like the opacity and the distance, but I want to just leave it here for this tutorial. So let's say we want to drop in like a texture to add a little bit more depth in our background. We can go ahead and bring in a texture. You can just Google one. And you see we kind of are able to create just a little bit of a nice background in here and make the scene come a little bit more alive, I guess. And that looks really interesting. I like that. And we can always add some more dust in here. So I'll go ahead and throw in the swirly dust pack here. Just bring it on top of our light beam. And what we're going to want to do is scale it down. Hit S on keyboard for scale. And we'll scale it down to right here. And we'll set it to screen. And then let's go ahead and put this underneath our uh, big dust beam layer here. And we can also set this maybe to like soft light if that might help blend a little bit more. Um, or we can keep it screen. I think we'll just keep it at screen for this. I think that should be good. So let's go and create a little bit of atmosphere. So let's go create a new solid by going to layer, new solid, and we can call it fog and we'll click okay. And let's go up to effect, noise and grain, fractal noise. And we'll increase the contrast by a little bit. And we'll go to the beginning of our timeline and we'll add a keyframe for evolution. And we'll open up the transform tab and we'll add a keyframe for offset turbulence. Go to the end of our animation, which I'll just say seven seconds for this. We'll set the evolution to 1x and we'll increase the turbulent display or sorry the offset turbulence a little bit to the right and a little bit downward. So there's a little bit of animation in this fog. And what we'll do is we'll hit T on our keyboard for opacity and we'll set the opacity down to 10%. And we can also set the blend mode to screen. And let's put this layer on top of our text. And of course it's a little bit subtle, but you can see it in there. It's gonna be a little animation. If you want to, you can always set this up to maybe like 20% so you can see a little bit more. But it's really up to you. I'll keep it at 20%. So it should be nice. And then let's kind of have a little bit of a better reveal here. So let's kind of create like uh, an intro animation, if you will. Let's go ahead and go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And we'll just call it blur. We can rename it blur. And we'll go up to effect, blur and sharpen, Gaussian blur. And we'll add a keyframe for blurriness. Hit U on your keyboard to bring up the keyframe. And we'll move this forward to maybe like a second and a half. And we'll set the blurriness up to like 20. And maybe a little bit more than that. Maybe it'll be like 30. And we'll repeat edge pixels. Make sure to check that box. And we'll make this last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on our keyboard. So we'll have like a very subtle, you know, uh, focus, if you will. So we're wrapping up the scene and we'll go up to layer new null object. And we'll parent all of our layers to the null object. And now what we'll do is we'll go to the beginning of our timeline. We'll hit 
and we'll hit S on our keyboard for scale. And we'll also bring up uh, position by holding down Shift P. And we'll add a keyframe for scale. And we'll go to the end of our animation here, seven seconds. And we'll scale this to like maybe 107. So everything will kind of come closer to the camera. And we'll add a little bit of camera shake, just a very subtle touch to it. We'll all click the stopwatch for position and we'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis, 0.5 comma, five close parenthesis. And I'll zoom in there real fast for those of us who've never seen this expression before. Wiggle, open parenthesis, 0.5 comma, five. And there you have that. So there'll be a little bit of camera shake added to the overall animation of everything. And we can easily color correct the light beams here. So go to your light beam layer, go up to effect, color correction curves. And we can go here to like the red channel and we can bring this, you know, the red down a little bit. So it looks a bit, a bit more uh, greenish blue. We can always go to the green channel, bring this down a little bit. Of course, just experiment with this. We can make it look a little bit more blue. So it adds a little bit more color contrast to the scene. It looks really cool. And let's say we want to add a little bit of flicker to the beams. Go up to effect, color correction, brightness and contrast. And let's all click the brightness stopwatch and we'll type in wiggle, close, open parenthesis, uh, we'll do like 0.5 comma 50, close parenthesis. And this way there'll be a little bit of flicker to the overall light beam and it'll be pretty interesting. So let's say we want to change out this light beam without, you know, affecting any of our work. What we can do is select the light beam here in the timeline and grab another one up here in your project window. And let's say we want to use window beam. What we can do is hold down alt on our keyboard click the window beam and drag it right into the timeline and it'll automatically swap out our original, um, you know, light beam layer, keeping all those parameters exactly the same. So that'd be pretty cool. So we kind of see what we have here. And it's just another way that we can easily light up the scene, but we're gonna keep this where we have it. And if we're gonna wrap the scene right here, remember to turn on motion blur for all your layers and turn it on at the top. And after a quick render, this is what we have. and. It looks really nice. We didn't put a lot of effort into this, but with the light kit that we got from rocketstock.com, we've been able to easily create an awesome scene with some depth in it and it could come for a awesome title. There's also a lot of other uses for this. So go ahead and download the pack and experiment with what you can create. So in the meantime, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And please be sure to check out my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I hope you have a good day.